Hi, this is Roger in Finland and today we're gonna check how to use your Zoom H1n as a microphone for your online meeting and calls. We're gonna take a look for Google Meet, Zoom calls and also Microsoft Teams. And for the impatient ones, just plug the Zoom H1n via USB to your computer, set it to work as an interface. I would recommend to set it to work with USB power so you can forget about the batteries. Then just fire up the, your meeting software of choice, either with the Google Meet, Zoom, or Microsoft Teams, or Skype, or whatever you use. Then select the input to be the Zoom H1n, and you're good to go. And now we go to some more details. If you've seen some of my other videos on the Zoom H1n, this is a very affordable, very, very capable device. And today we're gonna to be talking specifically about the feature of using it as an audio interface for your computer. So think about it as a pocketable, handy recorder that can double out as an external sound blaster for your machine. And this is how well they are. So then you just plug it via USB to your computer and it uses a micro USB, which means that most likely you have some cables from your phones lying around at home. Then it's going to prompt you to choose whether you want it as a uh, card reader or as an audio interface. And here, by the way, if you choose a card reader, it's just going to appear you as a normal folder or a drive in your computer. And that might be useful in case you do not have a micro SD card reader or an adapter for your computer. So that's a way to download the file to, to your computer if you don't have those. But anyway, back to the topic for today. Now we would select the interface. Then the other options that it's allowing us to choose is if we want it as a PC slash Mac with USB power or PC slash Mac with battery power or iOS device. I do not have a Mac or iOS devices, so I'm going to be showing stuff in a Windows machine. So that's what we'll use. And I definitely will use the USB power because then it means that I can just forget about batteries, which is great. So now after you've done this, basically the computer sees the Zoom H1n as a, another audio device that does uh, have input and it does have output. One thing to remember is that when you're in this mode, the Zoom H1n cannot be used as a recorder. So if you were planning to have your Zoom call by using the Zoom H1n as a microphone and record the call in the, in the Zoom H1n itself, that cannot be done. And you'll notice that as soon as it's in the interface mode, basically any indication menus and the functionality in the screen that it's about recording is not there. You can still, of course, use the analog gain uh, which is great one of the great features of the zoom h1n to start from you can use the limiter and you can use the low pass filter any of the audio functionalities but nothing related to recording that's just something to keep in mind and now let's check how to enable this thing in google meet zoom microsoft teams and i have to say that i do use google meet in daily basis maybe sometimes more than i would like to so i'm very familiar with the system I'm going to show how to do it in Zoom and Teams, but there's some chances that I'm going to be less able to answer questions in those systems. But still, if you have them, please put, post them down below and I'll try to help. So in Google Meet, you can choose your audio device before you join the call. So you have the preview of you, possibly because you have the camera on, which is a recommended thing for online meetings anyway. And then on top of that preview, there's those three dots. You go there, click settings, and then in here you can, in the audio tab or audio section, you can change what is the audio input device and the audio output device. I recommend to put the Zoom H1n in both. We're gonna explain in detail later why, but Google Meet is gonna give you a hint if you choose different devices for input and output. If you would have joined the meeting and forgot to set the Zoom H1n as your input device, you can still change it while the meeting is ongoing. And that might be a useful thing if something goes wrong with some other device you have, and then you plug the Zoom H1n and you do that during the call, that's okay. Again, down below on the right side of the screen, three dots, settings, and change your audio properties, and then that's it. Then you have the analog gain control in the Zoom H1n, and you just use it as a microphone as you would normally use the device. In Zoom, let's take a look. I'm gonna do it within the call, and on the lower left corner of the Zoom interface, there's the icon of the microphone with a small arrow, if you click on it, then you will be able to select the different input and output devices. Again, I would suggest to do both input and output, the Zoom H1n, and you're good to go. In Microsoft Teams, still very similar. So when you fire up the meeting or you're in the meeting, then you go here where you have your settings or properties, and you can then adjust again the input to be the Zoom H1n and the output to be the Zoom H1n. 
As you can see, my computer does not tell me zoom H1N, so it's a longer string. Because I've been saying to use the zoom H1N as both input and output, now the question is, should I use it just as a microphone or also as an output device? And in a nutshell, if you could be only using headphones, you could anyway. I would still recommend to use the zoom H1N as an output device. But let's take a look at why. So if you're a Google Meet user, Google Meet actually gave you a hint. When you try to set uh, different devices for input and output in the audio, it's telling you that it's gonna be more difficult to handle echoes and feedback. What happens here if you're actually listening to the meeting using your external speakers from your computer or even the speaker integrated in the H1N, the microphone is picking on that, but it shouldn't transmit that because you're just listening to it. And nowadays, these pieces of software are pretty, pretty good actually at canceling those echoes and canceling the feedback but they are not absolutely immune. So in general, I would recommend, even just out of politeness and both also, to be more concentrated in the meeting itself, to use headphones, it just works better. But if not, then the, these pieces of software have a much easier time handling these echoes and feedbacks if both the input and output device are the same. So that's the reason. Again, because the speaker of the Zoom H1N is not brilliant or not super awesome, it would do the job, but anyway, I would recommend to use the Zoom H1N as an output device and just plug your favorite pair of headphones there. One thing to remember is that not only the Zoom H1N, the microphone itself can be used, but the Zoom H1N can be used to use also external microphones. I have a video actually going through a few alternatives of different microphones that can be used externally through the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack in here. And you could have, for instance, a Rode Video Micro boom somewhere here in the um, outside of the frame, which is gonna sound really, really good, using the Zoom H1 hand to transmit that into the call. So that should be a pretty, pretty big uh, step up if you're comparing it especially to the integrated microphone in your laptop, which they tend to be not very, very good. Another way of using the Zoom H1N, uh, again, as an interface and whatnot, is to boom it somewhere up here. You might need a little bit longer cable, but it can be done. And again, you get the advantage of not being visible, getting the sound quality of the Zoom H1N, and then figure out how to handle your pair of headphones. So I hope you learned something new today. At least now you know another use of the Zoom H1N and these online meetings is something that for many, many of us have become even more important during this last strange year. And I'm pretty sure that we're gonna have even more these kind of video conferences. So I think that anything that is helpful to improve the video and especially the audio of those meetings, is just a helpful thing. I hope you liked the video. If you did, please like and subscribe and we're gonna see you soon for some more content.